Good morning. It's louder than I thought. Uh, my name is Michelle Lin. I am a medical officer in the Division of Clinical Review. And today I want to speak with you about comparative analyses. So over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to provide you with an overview of our 2017 guidance on the topic and give you some tips on how you may approach the assessment. I will also discuss some common deficiencies that we have found um, and observed in these combination drug device combination products. So as you already heard, um, generic drug products are considered to be therapeutically equivalent to the reference if they have the same clinical effect and safety profile when administered to the patients under the conditions specified in the labeling. So for combination products, these same expectations apply. And as you heard from Lisa, the FDA would consider whether the users can use a generic combination product when it's substituted for the reference without the intervention of a healthcare provider and or without additional training prior to the use of the generic product. Now, with this being said, um, the generic and the reference products do not need to be identical, as long as these differences will not preclude approval under an ANDA. Um, and as you previously heard as well, the review considerations of these combination products for therapeutic equivalents um, include assessing the performance characteristics of the device, then also the user interface, or these use considerations. And that will be the focus of my talk today. So what is the user interface of a combination product? Well, it refers to all the components a, um, the user may interact with. So this is pretty broad. It can include the instructions for use, packaging, different parts of the label, um, and of course, the device constituent parts and any associated controls and displays. Now, in order to identify and determine whether these differences in the user interface may impact the drug delivery device of a generic combination product when compared to the reference, we recommend that you make comparisons of the two. And this comparison is what we refer to as the comparative analyses. Um, so as you already um, heard, in January of 2017, FDA published a draft guidance um, detailing our current thinking on how to conduct a comparative analysis for these generic combination products. Now, before I kind of dive into the guidance, there are couple of terms that I want to point out because these are mentioned pretty frequently throughout the guidance. So the first is external critical design attribute. So these are features that directly affect how a user perform a critical task that is necessary in order to use or administer the drug product. Now a critical task can be considered as a user task that if performed incorrectly or not at all, would or could cause harm to the patient or the user, where harm could be defined as anything to include compromised care. So basically, any task that, if done improperly, that may impact the administration or the delivery of the drug product, and thus its intended effect. So now, um, within the comparative analysis as described in the guidance, there are three different sections that we will want you to look at. The first is a labeling comparison, then look at the physical comparison of the delivery device constituent parts. And the third section is the comparative task analysis. So in the next few slides, I'm going to give you a brief description of each of these sections. So the first section is a labeling comparison. And by this, we mean a side-by-side, line-by-line, comparison of relevant sections of the prescribing information, the instructions for use, and descriptions of the delivery device constituent parts of the generic combination product and its reference. So relevant sections of the prescribing information may include any preparation instructions, um, if relevant, and the how supply or the storage instructions as well. Now with regards to the physical comparison of the delivery device, uh, what we would like you to do is examine the physical features of the reference product and then compare them to the proposed generic combination product. Now, physical features may include things like size and shape, 
but it can also include any visual, audio, or tactile feedback if it's present. The last section, the comparative task analysis. So here we recommend you physically manipulate the products and systematically analyze and compare the sequential activities that are required for the user to use your device and administer the drug product. So again, the focus is on the critical tasks um, to ensure that the drug gets to where it's supposed to go and do what it's supposed to do. So now that you have identified the differences in these three sections, we ask you to consider them in the context of the overall risk profile of the product. And the guidance recommends categorizing each of these assessments into either no difference, minor difference, or other difference. Um, so for minor difference in the guidance, it is defined as the difference in the user interface of the proposed product when compared to the reference that do not affect an external critical design attribute. Now, as far as for other difference, the FDA would consider a difference as other if any aspect of a comparative analysis suggests that the difference in the design of the user interface um, may impact an external critical design attribute that involves the administration of the product. So, if we are not sure it may um, impact the administration, or if it really seems like it will affect the administration of the product, then it would fall under this other category. So in the instances where other differences are identified, um, the first recommendation the guidance um, has is consider redesigning your um, product so that the user interface um, Sorry, consider redesigning the user interface so that it minimizes the difference um, with the RLD. Now, if that's not feasible, or and depending on the difference, additional information or data may be um, used to support the user interface design difference. Now, the type of information or data really will depend on the difference we consider and the risk involved. Um, an example of this additional data that was previously mentioned, and it's mentioned in the guidance, is the comparative use human factor study. Now, I will not be going into this today, but if you feel that a comparative use human factor study would be the most appropriate method in your, in your um, specific instance for your specific product, then we recommend that you allow us to provide feedback um, either through the control correspondence or the or you conduct the study. Now, I also want to mention that if there are certain cases, if it is clear the difference significantly impacts an external critical design attribute, FDA can determine that the differences in the user interface are it's too different to be substituted for the, for the reference. And in those cases, additional information may not support approval of your product. Um, so I want to point out, um, Lisa did this as well in the previous presentation, that certain differences in the related to the differences in the this will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. So now that I've given you a brief overview of our um, 2017 guidance, I want to take a moment and give you some tips on how you can approach the assessment of these um, is no generic combination product will produce the same clinical effect and safety profile as the reference under the conditions specifying the labeling. Now, in order to answer these questions, there are product-specific factors that you should keep in mind. Um, some of them that I want to highlight are First, the complexity of the device. So it's the considerations for the oral dosing device may be different than considerations for something more complex, like a pen injector or an auto injector. You also want to think about the use environment. Where will the device be used? So let me in the hospital setting. I also want to think about the use of the 
familiarity with the product or um, timing maybe a So we're looking for the two main categories I will touch upon are when labeling and with device markings. So for labeling, the first deficiency I have listed is illustrations do not accurately represent the proposed product. So an example of this is if the RLD instructions for use includes illustrations of their product, we suggest that any image of the device in the proposed instructions for use um, should accurately represent the proposed product. So if, let's say, there is an acceptable difference in the shape of the proposed product, um, that, then the proposed instruction for use should show that product shape and not use an image of the reference product. Now, the next two um, points I have listed address deficiency in language, so differences in language that would be considered deficient. So to address Proposed labeling contains missing or inconsistent information or is missing information from the RLD labeling. Now, to address this, we recommend that the information you put in your labeling be consistent throughout different components. And if the RLD labeling, for instance, has information for the user regarding disposal of a product, then that information should be included in your labeling as well. And the last labeling deficiency I have listed, tasks described in the instructions for use do not represent the steps needed to use the product. Um, an example of this would be if the proposed product, let's say, has an induction seal at the opening of the bottle that the user would need to remove first, um, but the reference product did not. So this additional step may need to be included in your instructions for use. All right, so let's move on to device markings. Now, our recommendations for these deficiencies focus more on minimizing medication error. Um, for the first one, our recommendation is that the device is able to measure the doses recommended in the product um, in the prescribing information. So, for instance, if the product is a weight-based dosing, 
then the combination product should also be able to measure the range of doses that may be prescribed. Now, in cases where the markings include numbers, orientation of the number actually may be important. So if the instructions of use ask the users to kind of invert the bottle in order for them to use the device and measure um, the prescribed dose, if the numbers are upside down when the users are trying to perform this task, then they may have difficulty reading the numbers or misread the numbers, and then therefore um, lead to medication error. Now, similar recommendations are made for extraneous measurement markings. So if they recommend doses are typically in milliliters, then having an additional unit of measurement, um, as you can see in the picture, in this case, teaspoons, may be confusing for the user and then, once again, lead to medication error. So finally, we recommend adequate contrast between the drug product and the device. And this is um, probably applies uh, more to devices that are used for measurement. So as you can see on the picture on the left, the black plunger tip allows for contrast against a white liquid product. Whereas on the right, the white plunger tip um, makes it a lot more challenging for the users to see um, the dose that they're trying to measure. So here are a couple of useful guidances for you to consider as you develop your product and conduct your comparative analyses. The first one provides considerations to minimize medication error for various product designs. Now the second one the focus is on over-the-counter liquid drug devices. However, a lot of the principles can apply to prescription drugs as well. So now in summary, the FDA recommends standardized comparative analysis to consistently identify and categorize differences between the user interface of a proposed generic and its reference. And the goal of the comparative analysis is really to identify and evaluate if there are differences in the user interface. And once again, the focus is on the differences in external critical design attributes and critical tasks between the generic and the reference. Now, if you have any development questions, um, you may submit them through the control correspondence or for certain products, maybe a 